Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, today I'd like to talk uh, a little bit about vitamin E uh, and in particular I'd like to talk uh, about why it's important to consider vitamin E as a group of compounds rather than as a single isolated vitamin. Um, vitamin E is obviously an essential nutrient in humans. It's required uh, for health. If we don't have enough vitamin E, uh, it causes deficiency diseases and we die. Uh, in animals, uh, vitamin E has been shown to be required uh, for reproductive success. Uh, and in humans and animals, uh, vitamin E is shown, has been shown to be uh, a very important antioxidant. Now, when we consume vitamin E, which is produced in plants, uh, that vitamin E is absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract. It's passed to the liver. Uh, and in the liver, there is a protein called the tocopherol transfer protein. And that protein is responsible for uh, packaging uh, the absorbed vitamin E into lipoproteins. Those lipoproteins then enter the circulation. They pass around the body and they distribute uh, the vitamin E uh, to the cells. Uh, and the cells accumulate vitamin E in their lipoprotein membranes. Now, the role that vitamin E plays in these lipoprotein membranes is really uh, as that of an antioxidant. Uh, vitamin E is a very good antioxidant um, and it's fat soluble and therefore is very happy to sit in those uh, fat soluble lipid membranes. Um, it prevents lipid peroxidation of those membranes uh, and if there is excessive lipid peroxidation in cell membranes, uh, the cellular function is lost uh, and that causes cell damage and tissue damage and eventually uh, disease and death. So it's important to have high concentrations of vitamin E uh, in those uh, lipid membranes uh, because uh, vitamin E really is the primary antioxidant uh, for protecting them from uh, this lipid peroxidation which occurs through oxidative stress. Um, now, as I say, vitamin E uh, is present in the diet, uh, but really vitamin E uh, is a group of compounds and not a single vitamin. Now, there are eight compounds that have vitamin E activity. They, they all share the same activity as the uh, primary, most biological act by biologically active form of vitamin E, which is alpha tocopherol. Uh, there are four tocopherols and there are four tocotrienols. Uh, there is alpha, beta, gamma and delta tocopherol and there is alpha, beta, gamma and delta tocotrienol. Now they have structural differences and this gives them different biological activities. So if we have a look at the tocopherols, uh, all, all of the vitamin E uh, compounds have a chrominal head uh, and they have a phytyl tail. The difference between the tocopherols and the tocotrienols is that the tocopherols have a, a saturated uh, phytal tail and the uh, tocotrienols have an unsaturated phytal tail uh, that contains three double bonds. Now that gives the phytal tail of the tocotrienols a pronounced kink uh, and that means that the tocotrienols do not fit so well into uh, the uh, membranes and that might actually be a good thing because as with polyunsaturated fatty acids, the kink in the uh, in the in the carbon chain uh, actually disrupts the membrane, and this increases membrane fluidity. And membrane fluidity can have an influence on the health of the cells because, for example, it alters the transport properties of the membrane, uh, and it also uh, alters other aspects of cellular function. So there is evidence that uh, the tocotrienols may have a specific effect on cells because of this kink in their chain. Um, the vitamin E isomers, uh, the tocopherols and tocotrienols, also have uh, different methyl groups on their chrominal heads, uh, and that may also cause uh, differences in their uh, biological activity. Um, this is still an area of ongoing study, and it's not exactly known how the vitamin E isomers differ, but there is uh, accumulating evidence that uh, it's not just alpha tocopherol that is required uh, by uh, humans, but they, uh, that there are these other vitamin E isomers may also have uh, important health effects that alpha tocopherol isn't able to uh, fulfill in its role uh, as an antioxidant. So if I give an example, uh, the tocotrienols are very effective at lowering cholesterol levels. Uh, this effect is not really seen in the tocopherols. So there may be undiscovered reasons why uh, some of the isomers are actually more important than others. What we do know is that the most biologically active form of the vitamin E, uh, of vitamin e uh, is the alpha tocopherol. Uh, and this is because the alpha tocopherol is preferentially uh, uh, bound to the tocopherol transfer protein. So when we absorb vitamin E, the tocopherol transfer protein will preferentially transfer the alpha tocopherol into uh, the lipoproteins for distribution around the body. 
Now, this is quite interesting because it suggests that if we uh, have very high amounts of alpha tocopherol in our diet, we can actually uh, inhibit the absorption of the other isomers. Uh, and there is evidence to show this. Those people that supplement with high amounts of alpha tocopherol actually have decreases uh, in their plasma levels of, for example, gamma tocopherol. Uh, and also uh, the other uh, uh, less important, uh, well, I say less important, the less common isomers in the diet. Um, generally, alpha tocopherol and gamma tocopherol are the most common uh, vitamin E isomers in food. Uh, and uh, alpha tocopherol is the most common one to find in supplements. So those people that generally take a vitamin E supplement, if you go and have a look at what you're taking, you'll probably find that it is alpha tocopherol. Um, now, this is important because... Um, as with all things in nutrition, balance is important. Uh, and if we take a supplement of vitamin E uh, in the form of alpha tocopherol, we have to be very careful that we don't upset our biochemistry by uh, inhibiting the absorption of uh, the other isomers. Uh, evidence is accumulating that rather than uh, consuming more vitamin E, what we really need to be doing is consuming more quality vitamin E, which means taking the vitamin E uh, in balance, and that means taking in all of the isomers. Now, what I would suggest is if you have a look at your supplement and it just contains alpha tocopherol, uh, that you would consider swapping that when you've finished uh, the, the current pot that you're consuming to uh, a, a, a supplement that contains the mixed tocopherols. That means it will contain alpha, beta, gamma and delta tocopherol. Uh, and that means that you will be getting all of the isomers uh, of vitamin E that are the tocopherols. Now, a better way uh, from there to move would be to get a supplement that also contains the tocotrienols or in addition take a tocotrienol supplement that contains mixed tocotrienols. Um, this will help balance your vitamin E intake and this will provide you with um, a more of a balanced uh, representation of the vitamin E isomers. Um, because this is an area of science that's not fully understood uh, and we are only beginning to understand how the vitamin E isomers affect each other, uh, I would suggest that rather than uh, follow the route of taking a single isomer, that this would be a better strategy. Now, of course, if you obtain all of your vitamin E from your diet, um, you generally will be, uh, will be getting primarily alpha tocopherol and gamma tocopherol, but there are the other uh, tocopherols and tocotrienols in food. For example, rice bran contains uh, quite high concentrations of tocotrienols. Oats contain tocotrienols which may explain some of their cholesterol lowering effects. Um, so obtaining your vitamin E from food is generally a safer way and this is we find this with all nutrients. Foods tend to contain more balanced ratios. When we look at the phytonutrients in foods for example they don't contain a single flavonoid. They can contain usually one, two, three, four, maybe even more flavonoids that generally in balanced amounts. Uh, if you tend to take flavonoids as supplements for example quercetin you tend to take a single substance and this may uh, upset the biochemistry of the body. So I would always recommend that you try and get as many uh, nutrients as you can uh, from food. And I would also suggest uh, that that is the same for vitamin E. Um, and now another question that might be worth considering is, can you actually get enough vitamin E in your food? Um, the types of foods that contain vitamin E tend to be uh, those uh, foods that contain uh, oils or fats. Um, a vitamin E is a plant synthesized compound, so generally it's found in plant foods. Um, and the plants use vitamin E for the same reason uh, that we use it. It's an antioxidant and it protects the oils uh, in the plant foods from uh, oxidation. Um, so foods with lots of uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids tend also to have uh, high amounts of vitamin E. Um, so nuts and seeds, for example, are good sources of vitamin E. Now the problem with this is that in order to be able to take uh, the high amounts of vitamin E that have shown to be protective of, for example, cardiovascular disease, you also have to uh, it, it take uh, a lot of polyunsaturated fats and this can upset the balance uh, of the fatty acid ratios in your diet. Um, I've always been of the opinion that uh, you, should vit uh, you should take vitamin E uh, as a supplement. Uh, I think there is enough evidence now uh, in the nutritional literature to show um, that vitamin E actually is beneficial to the health. Um, 
what I am against is taking uh, single isolated compounds at very high concentrations. Uh, I think most people at uh, 400 IU of vitamin E uh, per day is enough. Um, and I'm against obviously taking that just purely as alpha tocopherol. I think that you should take uh, the vitamin E as a group of mixed tocopherols. And ideally, uh, also, you should take uh, the mixed tocotrienols as well. If you can find a supplement, for example, that uh, contains between 200 and 400 IU, of all of the isomers of vitamin E, uh, that would probably uh, be the best uh, supplement that you would be able to take uh, in terms of maintaining your health. On top of that, obviously, you would get some vitamin E from your diet. And so I think the take-home message from this video really is that more is not uh, better when it comes to vitamin E. Uh, generally, better is better, and that means uh, considering all of the isomers of vitamin E. If you take a supplement of vitamin E, uh, make sure that it is a, a mixed tocopherol supplement. Uh, but don't forget your tocotrienols. They uh, possibly have uh, unique uh, roles uh, in human uh, nutrition. Uh, they're certainly uh, absorbed and they're certainly bioavailable uh, and the fact that they were effective at lowering cholesterol levels is an important consideration so I would suggest that if you take supplements of vitamin E uh, you take your mixed tocopherols uh, but don't forget to take your tocotrienols as well.